There's been some surprise things added into the most recent update into World of Tanks console and today's video is going to showcase everything you need to know about this update that has been received. Yes, it is a 9.73 gigabyte update that you can get on all of the consoles, whether that's Xbox One, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X slash S, they all have big updates for you to be able to download and the key thing about this update is that we have got some really really weird changes that Wargaming have implemented into the game and we'll cover those as we go through. Now then, the first thing that we want to talk about is of course the new season, it is Steel Beast. We've covered it in a update news video specifically about the entire new season which I will link at the end of this video. So if you want to get and stay tuned with the actual season information, what you can get, what sort of things that you can uh, receive during the season, then look at that video at the end of this one. But in today's video we're focusing on the key changes to the gameplay, all of the changes and updates that will gaming have implemented on top of just the season because there's been a lot of additions and the first one that we're talking about is of course the world war 2 co-op mode which you can see here of course cold war has its own co-op mode where you can basically play against ai the world war 2 co-op mode will be into well is introduced now where you can play against ai which is really really good for new players it's going to help them out a ton to be able to basically play against bots it's going to be super easy for them they're going to be able to learn a lot and i think that that's really really good however obviously when you transfer it then to multiplayer you're probably going to be a lot worse so hopefully they kind of get it right with the level or skill level of the bots that are going to be introduced um, and also if there are not enough humans your team will be supplemented with bots to fill the roster which is yeah uh interesting but i guess it's basically co-op mode anyway so it doesn't matter whether your team's got bots or not so you can basically play at any time on the world war 2 co-op and it's going to be useful for those of you who are trying to test out new different builds maybe maybe you don't want to be in the competitive zone of the multiplayer and so you're basically going on to co-op to test them out and decide for yourself whether it will be any good um other than that now we've got two new maps coming into the game the first one being dragon ridge now dragon ridge is a really really fun map to play i find that although it is very very difficult for heavy tanks to play and it's probably one of the maps that people struggle with the most and it does get a lot of hate and that's because it's quite a big map it's got a lot of hills as you can imagine being a ridge uh, which means that if you're in a heavy tank it takes a long time to get to somewhere and often a long time means that you're not in the game for very long when you actually finally get there and often your team can get removed before you get to the position but if you're a medium tank player if you're a light tank player if you're a fast TD or even a TD that has good camo you can use this map super well and that's kind of where I think they're that Wargaming got this map right hopefully there's been a few changes which maybe help out the heavies uh, but we'll have to cover that maybe in a specific video where we look at Dragon Ridge when I finally get on it get a good gameplay on it and we'll do a full video showcasing Dragon Ridge itself and similarly, you've got Nomenhon. Now, this is a map that I've really, really enjoyed as well. It was basically a winter map at the beginning. Um, it looks like they've basically changed it a little bit. You can see that there's a lot of pitted areas here. Kind of looks like Teepval Ridge, to be honest. And Nomenhon used to be one of my favourites. Um, and it is now a summer variant of the map. So I'm not too fussed on the way that they've kind of changed it. Should be interesting though, you've got this massive area in the middle where you can basically uh, get caught out. And I, I guess once again, when we get the map in the game, I can test it out, see what the changes are because this was a map that was previously in the game and obviously has been revamped and updated graphics wise so that it looks a little better because yeah, previously it looked you know it was 360 upgraded graphics basically uh, and now we're looking at newer console graphics which are going to be uh, definitely an improvement but still some way to go to keep up with the pc now then not only that and there's going to be a lot of not only that in this video and we've got the new radial commands now everyone if you've played this game for any length of time knows that with update 6.0 wargaming removed some of the key aspects of the new radial command and they've basically improved them and they've brought them back and now by player request we will be getting cover me need a target defend this position and no shot 
all four are really, really good pieces of information that you can tell your team because there's been so many times where I've thought, I just need someone to basically understand that I need them to spot for me if I'm in a heavy tank and I'm kind of pinned down and I know that a light tank's near me, but there's no option to even like suggest it other than having to then kind of go into the Xbox settings, change it and be like, oh yeah, get my microphone out and yeah, it doesn't work in the game and luckily they've basically changed it so now you will be able to actually um, <laughs> let your team know what you want to do. And you can see here, need a target here, you've got no shot and then obviously on the other menu you've then got uh, defend this position, cover me, etc. So it's going to be really, really useful. Wargaming have had to remove the sticky function so as soon as you go on it and release it will then basically uh, alert people to what you want to say so there's no longer kind of that little bit where it will stop you now actually have to kind of like pinpoint the area on the screen uh, which is a little bit disappointing I don't know quite maybe they had a little bit of problems with this um, so maybe that will come back in a later date but hopefully it does and not only that, dynamic stats. We've now completed dynamic stat support. All stats displayed will now reflect the benefits provided by any equipped consumable equipment, commander skill and camouflage. So what this relates to, uh, dynamic stats is basically if you're looking in the garage and you see, you know, your concealment, maybe you look at um, in the detailed statistics where it says, you know, you've got a reload base of like 6.9 seconds, but then it actually comes down by like 6 point, uh, well, 0.69 because you've got a 10% increase to your DPM. All of those different changes will now be reflected in the statistics screen, which is really, really beneficial for those of you who are wanting to kind of get to grips with the statistics, know where you can apply the best bonuses and stuff like that to improve yourself as a player. You'll see it with the commander skills as well. And of course, camouflage, because that gives you, I believe off the top of my head, don't quote me on this, a 3% increase to concealment. Yes, camo that you put on your tank does actually improve your concealment within the game. So it is beneficial, not only from a cosmetic standpoint, but actually within the game for remaining undetected and stuff like that. And along with this, they've also added information on the module display so that it's more accessible where you get uh, engine model, forward and reverse speed, uh, terrain resistance and turret module health. You'll also get in the name of the ammo as well for the ammo module. And they've also balanced a few maps. So we've got Pearl River, Cold War adjusted spawns to be further back from their current positions on all game modes. You've got Canals, which has basically had Team 1 spawns have been split into two groups. You've got Cold War Rezani, uh, having now spawns closer together for Team 2. And you've got Cold War and World War 2 Team Destruction. Team 2 now spawns closer together for Rezani as well. And then we also have the class based matchmaker is now implemented into the game. And this is something that I guess Wargaming have been testing for a long time. It's basically where Wargaming will want to tear up. If you've got one artillery on one team, there should always be another artillery on the other. There should also, if you've got five heavy tanks, there should be five heavy tanks on the enemy team. So you don't get a mismatch of like 10 heavy tanks on one team, two on the other, and then you get like eight tank destroyers where the other team has none. It's like basically just trying to fare it up as much as possible. Um, and they've removed the restriction that the number of platoon players should differ by no more than one. This was causing a lot of balance issues. So now you might see one platoon of two people and then two platoons of maybe three people on the other team so yeah I guess they're trying to keep the class and also the platoons balanced to some degree so they couldn't do both because otherwise it would take too long to basically uh, find a correct match that the matchmaker thought was okay and you could end up spending like multiple minutes in the queue which is what no one wants to do and they've also reduced the queue wait time for tiers 1 and 2 to 45 seconds before it fills with bots uh, which means that people who've basically kept their tier 1s and 2s are going to be able to play them uh, for a lot longer and they've also reduced the human required to, uh, requirement to create a tier 2 match from 11 to 7 so they're basically reducing that and then Probably the most interesting and surprising thing about World of Tanks console's latest update is that Wargaming have decided to implement multiple weapon systems onto tanks within the World War II game mode. Now, 
what does this actually mean? Well, let's have a look at the picture to kind of get an idea. Now, there are four tanks, I believe. Well, five tanks, uh, if we include all of these, the tier five, the tier six, we've got a tier eight and two tier tens, which are inclusive of the T1 heavy tank, the M6, the Vizilla KV4K and the KV4K unskinned version. Uh, we've also then got the Maus and the E100. Now, what do these tanks actually have within the game? Well, you will see here that the M6 has or the T1 Heavy even, has a 37mm gun that you can see on the barrel here, or on the turret next to the barrel. So this gun is now actually usable within the game. So you will be able to actually use this when you're playing um, in-game. The damage, however, of the tank, so don't go thinking, oh my god, it's going to be so overpowered, I can use two guns at the same time. No. The second gun has 0.46 accuracy, which is god awful and it has 40 damage the key for these from what wargaming have said is that these guns will basically be in addition to the standard ones but they will deal so little damage that they won't really be useful against anything other than to kind of break down cover and to break down various different things and you also have a very high rate of fire which means that they could have good dpm because if you're looking at this you can in addition to your standard rounds um, you'll be able to deal uh, 26 rounds of 40 damage if you pen with the god awful penetration values that you get of 48 and 36 which is just absolutely useless um you can get a premium rounds of course so yeah that's wargaming's way of basically pay to win for your second rounds um but there we go another way to milk the silver out of your account by firing multiple <laughs> multiple weapons at the same time but there we go 26 rate of fire means that you will be able to apply various different guns You'll also be able to unlock the various different aspects of the tank. And you'll actually see that the Maus here, which is the kind of top tier daddy with the E100, have the 75mm cannon. Now, you're thinking 75mm, that's going to be able to do like 200 damage. Well, no, the damage of the 75mm is 110. And that's if you actually pen. You've got about a five second reload though. So, it's actually not too bad or about a four second reload i'm not entirely sure if equipment is going to be able to boost these up so that's an interesting topic for you guys to test out and we'll be definitely testing out the e100 with this new setup because that is going to be an interesting video to get hand to hand with these new multiple weapon systems maybe we'll test out a various different ones of them the t1 heavy included um but you can see here, 0.43 accuracy, you've got 110 damage, you have the potential, if you can pen all of them, but with 43 penetration you're not going to be able to, uh, you'll be able to just take out cover, maybe someone's hiding behind something, maybe there's a building in your way that you can take down, uh, and it's going to be basically that's what they're useful for, they're not really going to be that big of a damage mechanic and only really going to be useful in those scenarios where you get behind a tank that is basically paper or you're coming up against light tanks where maybe you can just pump a couple of rounds additionally into them which will be beneficial but are they really going to make much of a difference? Probably not. And so you're seeing this with the Maus, you're seeing it with the Vizilla, the T1 Heavy, the M6 and yes of course the E100. So yeah, very interesting topic. I was not expecting them to actually release them with this update, uh, and so it's going to be a very, very strange way of Wargaming introducing them. But improvements for the secondary reticle are still being worked on, and the reticle doesn't always tie up with where the round will go. Well, that's always a good start from what Wargaming have said with a new mechanic that they're bringing into the game. So if you're firing one one direction where the reticle says, it may come out the side of your tank, is basically what they're saying. So... Fingers crossed they sort that out and get it up to scratch and up to standard as quickly as possible. We don't want another update 6.0 disaster, do we? Anyway, regardless of this, let me know what you think of this. Do you think it will be game breaking? Because personally, I don't think this is going to change a lot. With such low penetration values on these secondary guns, they're not really going to make a difference to me personally. I don't think the E100 is now going to become a god tier tank anymore, um, or the Maus for that matter. I just don't see it being that much of a problem but yeah let me know in the comment section down below and this it will be an interesting discussion that we can get in there now not only that <laughs> it's going to be a repeatable phrase yes uh, but we have the currency changes and this is something that is going to be fantastic for almost 
anyone that plays the game. You can now purchase garage slots for silver. Instead of having to pay the 200 gold or whatever it was previously, now it will be free. Or, well, free to a degree because it's silver. But, you know, play a couple games in Cold War and you'll be able to buy a garage slot. This means that anyone that's purchased garage slots for gold is going to be triggered because you've just paid actual money for something that was only available for money and now they've reverted it and now you can't buy it with money unless you convert gold to silver which is probably what this price is based on but regardless of that they basically made it free which is good because for new players it's going to be good for those of you who maybe like didn't want less to be in the game then yeah, it's going to be painful because you've just probably paid like £30 for a load of garage slots and now you can buy it for silver, which you probably have an abundance of. But yeah, at least for new players, it'll be better and for people who are starting out. But yeah, I can see that there will be some backlash from that. In a similar manner, uh, inscriptions are also now available for silver, so you can buy them permanently for silver which will be fantastic. It means that you don't have to spend 10,000 every single uh, week or 60,000 every single month. You can just purchase them one time and then you'll be able to get them. So that applies for emblems, inscriptions and flags. It doesn't include camo because Wargaming know that they can milk you for a little bit of gold with the camo. But yeah, all of the in emblems, inscriptions and flags will be now available permanently for silver, which is always good. Now then, Wargaming have been badgering on about this armor viewer that they're going to be doing something with it, but unfortunately, it's not what I thought it would be, and it is not a live model of the armor. It is basically that Wargaming have swapped them out so that the armor ranges within the armor value now have separate ranges for World War II and Cold War. So before, they used to basically have this kind of scale where it was like very much heavily weighted over here, but now they've basically changed it so that you can see stronger visual difference difference in armor thickness based on the mode you are in so it's not really too much of interest you can basically see the different varying depths of spaced armor and stuff like that within the game but yeah i guess it looks a little bit better but it would have been much better if they brought in a live model of the actual armor values and how it changes when you angle because that would help people rather than just give you a flat value where apparently this would be the best place to pen it when maybe you could go through here or maybe if the turret's side on <laughs> you should shoot this turret rather than the angled lower plate but there we go hopefully that will come at some point in the future also, garage improvements, raised gun barrels now won't, won't go past their maximum elevation because apparently that was a thing. Uh, destroyed tanks can no longer be rotated in garage. The level, the level progression, linear vehicle progression, sorry, progress now displayed as a bar instead of a diamond, which is always good. Uh, you've also got the increase the size of the no ammo display and contract widget received an updated AI. And then there's been a few things for spectator mode where team health bars will now drain in opposite directions. Camera icon on the minimap to integrate where which player is being spectated and all of that kind of jazz. I've also got uh, changes to the post battle results screen where adjusted the placement of the vehicles on the main or oh, the most valued player display to prevent large vehicles from obscuring other tanks because type fives. And then you've also got added the timestamp of the battle and the duration onto the post battle results screen. And now it uses your actual tank and commander pictures used in that battle on the personal tab. So this is always kind of additions that aren't too major but are going to be useful down the line or maybe cosmetically better and then in addition we've got a ton of additional improvements i'm not going to go through them all you can pause the video here read through them yourself they're nothing too major they're just kind of small little tweaks buffs changes like minuscule changes to the maps or stuff like that and so you can read there through that and then there's also some issues that have been addressed as again, I'm not going to sit here and read through like 30, 40 different lines of vehicles being changed with their marks of excellence and stuff like that. But I will pause it at interval moments where you can basically read through it and you can just pause the video uh, as we go through here. But whilst we're doing that, hopefully uh, you guys are in, uh, liking the update so far. Obviously, let me know if you've been playing today in the comment section down below. Let me know whether you think of the new vehicles that have been changed because of the uh, improved kind of 
guns that they've added where they've got multiple guns and of course let me know what you think of the new season pass with the leopard 1a1 for free that i kind of got wrong in that previous video on the new season so make sure that you watch that video where we cover all of the news for the actual season itself whether you should buy the season pass which season pass should you buy that sort of stuff that is all in this video on screen on the left and on the right there'll be a playlist of tank reviews where you can go through loads of different gameplays that we've had really good games and hopefully you can learn a thing or two other than that i hope that you join me in those videos and if you don't i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i hope that you'll see me there goodbye